This is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 10.5. And there is the point in scholarship that we just picked up from the museum quest. And because we got that, can we read this book? Let's just double check. Okay, security. It should give us that point. Or, wait, that's the third point. That means if I play this point, it'll give me the fourth point. Okay, I was looking at my Excel spreadsheet while I was doing this. You max this out by doing it this way. You play the perk, and then you play the book. And that should give me the fourth point. Now let's go see, let's go see the glory. And yeah, now look at that. Melee, security, and stealth all at four. And... Yeah, on my Excel spreadsheet, I have everything that's going to go to five because of a book or a or an occult item. But um, yeah, that that's really good. And we still have we're still in downtown, and we have four in those three skills. Okay, here we go to the penthouse. Always want to save before the conversation. Yeah, I went, what is this about? Because if you use persuasion, he sees right through it here and tells you, basic, tells you you're basically a sycophant and he has no respect for you. So, yeah, I went with something else. Okay, this is what we want. We want to go see Gary. It's time to go to Hollywood. Well, we have a couple things to clean up first. So, yeah, that's fine. Gary, Gary, Gary. I was going to say one of the best characters in Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines, but there are so many great characters. Yeah, I'll find Gary. In fact, I want to go find Gary. One of my favorite quests in the entire campaign, or, or in the entire game, is uh, King's Way. I just absolutely enjoy King's Way. Uh, the way I got comfortable with it, I sat down, I remember one Saturday, and I just played it over and over again until I learned where everything was. And it takes a while to play King's Way the first time. Um, and it's a very long quest. And boy, I hope Bloodlines 2 has very long quests like this. And one of the challenges about playing a Ventru in my mind was to play King's Way as a Ventru. Oh man. Okay. So it's time to go feeding. Ooh, almost got caught. Oh man, that was that was close. That was, that was way too close. So yeah, th there are some uh, good blood dolls in the alley. I keep looking for that knife. There should be a knife there, I'm telling you. Even though I know that there isn't one. Okay, this is one of the best items in the game. Keisha, you can't find a washcloth with a little soap and water. Take care of that face. Yeah, the odious chalice. One of the best items in the game. I usually save the Odious Chalice for um, for that moment where the bat takes you through the wall and you always need blood uh, when I play, and I don't want to use any blood packs just as a personal challenge. The Odious Chalice is what makes it possible. So, yeah, in this playthrough, I don't care. I mean, you get tons of blood packs. You might as well use them. 
and I'm going to use them. Okay, so I'm just uh, cleaning up loose ends. $4,300. Yeah, we finished a big quest, so it's time to pick up some money. $250. Thank you very much. Yeah, she will just pile it up for you if you don't want to stop in, but I just, I want to pile it up because I'm about to spend some money. We're about to go to Hollywood. Okay, a gambit. And this is the persuasion check in, um, yeah, the Hollywood restaurant thing. There's a food critic there. If you are playing a male character, you can with high seduction, you can seduce him. He cannot be seduced by a female character. And that's just how it is. So. Yeah, yeah, new area. Have to stop in. See the guy in charge. Got it. Yep, those are the rules. We'll head over and check in and get permission to be here. So we might as well go ahead and do that straight away. Yeah, that's an easy feed. Almost always there's an easy place to feed by every tunnel. So lots of blood in Hollywood. Always save before dialogue. Yeah, this game really is about 80% talking. Most people don't really notice it because you're so engaged, but it's almost all going through 10,000 lines of dialogue, and I think that's great. If it was just run around and kill stuff, that would be incredibly boring. Well, that's why this is an RPG, and not whatever the heck Skyrim or Fallout 4 happen to be. Um, I love those two games, but they're not RPGs. By, I mean, they're just not. So, yeah, this. 10,000 lines of dialogue, interesting characters, interesting dialogue, interesting quests. I mean, this is just, this is so cool. Kafka. If you have not read Kafka, I highly recommend it. Joseph K. Directory named Joseph K. Kafka. Password. Very cool. So someone at Troika was a Kafka fan. As am I. So, yeah, here's an easy quest. Yeah, high persuasion is just the easy way to go through bloodlines. I don't know what to tell you. You mind stepping out of my way? That's kind of where I go with, with this. So, Masquerade Redemption, which we don't need. And... I think I've fed on her before in the past. But we don't need any blood. Okay, we can do this mission.
Yeah, I tend to go with uh, just the guy I wanted to talk to, and then persuasion, and you're becoming the joke of the food world works, so that's the one I always pick. And, yep, I think that's it. Yeah, my work here is done. Yeah, I just thought of something. It, yeah, vampires are involved, so it wouldn't be to persuade him to give a positive review. Yeah, every character is kind of persuading. Every character is asking you to do something bad. It's like no one's asking you to do something good. So it's not go and persuade him to give a positive review. No, persuade him to destroy the restaurant. So world of darkness. And we just do it. We just, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Hey, I got an experience point, even though I just destroyed a, you know, I just destroyed a restaurant. Okay, time to spend some money. Yeah, you, you no doubt noticed that I didn't do the um, Bishop Vic, um, the Bad Blood quest line in downtown. And the reason is that I want to get a 44 Magnum and a Spaz and, a, and better armor before I do that. And that's going to make that, there are two fights in that, and it's going to make both of them incredibly easy. The uh, Colt Anaconda is actually a range weapon. It, it's very good at long range. And yeah, the MAC-10 is not very good. I'm going to go ahead and buy this now, since I'm not going to ever get any more points in Haggle. Uh, I'm going to fill both of these weapons up about halfway, because there are a bunch of ammo lockers that I'm going to walk into that are going to provide me with a lot of free ammo. So I'm so I'm generally going to fill them up about halfway and then, um, you know, just pick up free, a whole bunch of free ammunition. Yeah, and if things get, you know, if things get tough, I can always... If I run out of bullets, which that's a lot of bullets that I just that I have in inventory right now, but just in case I happen to run out, um, I can always just do blood buff and take out a an axe and beat everybody in the head with it and probably kill just about everything in the game. Yeah, I count this am ammunition as free. It's so low cost, and it just kills everything low level. Um, it's like everything low level is just dead. So, yep, I like my leather armor. Look at that. That is one nice set of armor. I hope Bishop Vic likes my new set of armor. We do lose one in dexterity, so anytime I need another point in dexterity for anything lockpicking or sneaking, just take this set of armor off and put on level two. But yeah, I can just run around in this armor. This is, this is terrific. Hey, I'm not editing this out because I've had people ask me in um, the comments section how I got from from Hollywood on the boulevard to the cemetery. They didn't they didn't know exactly how to do that, and it's not that big. You just kind of run around the building and it's here, but it can be frustrating if you don't know where it is and you, if you don't where, know where Romero is, and that's what we're going to do. Because it's time to get some guns and be able to use them. Yes, this is the moment where we start building up for being able to use guns. 
And that's one reason why I'm not going to fight those two big fights in downtown until after I come here, not just the armor, but I'm going to get some perks in guns, ranged weaponry. And oh man, are we about to pick up a really good weapon. A really, really good weapon. So we have the 44 for long range, but we need something for short range. And we're about to pick up a really good weapon. So, short range, deadly weapon, long range, very deadly weapon, good set of armor, and a bunch of points into ranged. And it transforms this character into the end game character. So, as a Ventru, maybe you want to do this zombie quest. This is the most frustrating quest in Bloodlines. I absolutely hate it. I'm never going to do it again. It is insanely frustrating. No. Uh, there's an easy way to, there are two easy ways to do this. If you have seduction, you just can sleep with this guy if you're a female character. And, yeah, here's some ammo in this case. I was talking about you get some free ammo. Not much, but some. But, yeah, the real easy way to do this quest is to uh, just go hire him a prostitute. And that's what we're going to do, and we're going to be done with this. Um, running back and forth and trying to stop the zombies is just... Yeah, it, it's the only quest in the entire game that I just, I don't like it. I'm never going to do it again. Nope. Yeah, once again, persuasion gets the job done. Okay, make sure I have my second perk in firearms, and he's going to give me the third one. So it's three XP, and oh, I, I actually put um, two and three, because in the plus patch he gives you the fourth point in ranged. So, yeah, two and three. So we got two experience points, and stat increased. Oh, the guy who, who does this voice uh, is, oh, I can't think of the guy's name, but he's in all the interviews for Bloodlines 2. Uh, every time he talks, I hear Romero, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, so we got the stat increased, and if you stand here at the door, you can hear them. Um, and, and there's also really good background music, which I can't play because of what YouTube is currently doing um, with blocking all my videos. But firearms went from, we had one point in it, and now we have four. And so that's really good. That's, that's the beginning of building a nice ranged uh, character. That was a big jump. I think the fifth point is a book, but I don't have my Excel spreadsheet in front of me. I think the fifth point is a book that we will eventually pick up. And I think it's in... Um, yeah, I think I know where it is, now, now that I think about it. Which you will see later. So, now we go pick up the spaz. Picked up a spaz this morning, did you? Mercurio, the one guy I can trust in the entire game. Always there, always helpful. A mere $410? Thank you. So yeah, let's go ahead and load up on some ammo. 
again, we have some resupply opportunities. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use this ammo. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have filled up, but... Yeah, <laughs> very happy. Yeah, the game just changed. You can kill almost everything in the game. Just run up, run up to it with a spaz, put the spaz right into the enemy and pull the trigger. The tab key is what turns it to automatic mode and you want to turn it to automatic mode. It, it works fine on semi-automatic mode, but automatic mode, you just push the barrel right up against the enemy, uh, squeeze the trigger, empty out a magazine, and the thing, whatever it is, is dead. Only There are only a couple things that can survive a blast of spaz ammo, and they're pretty high-level enemies. So... Yeah, not only is it uh, effective, it's cost-effective, and it's fun. So we got a hundred dollars. Damn, we still have a bunch of money. After all, all the money we just spent, we still have a big pile of cash. So that was really good. We got the spaz. We're ready for the next thing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.